Faces, the pinnacle of success. Welcome to Bold Faces, sir. It's my pleasure. For the benefit of our viewers and Nigerians in the diaspora, let's meet you. Tell us about yourself. Well, I'm Professor Chinedu Ositadim Nebo, a professor of metallurgical and materials engineering and uh, two times vice chancellor of Nigerian universities, first University of Nigeria and Soka, and uh, secondly Federal University of Oyekiti. Uh, I was pioneer vice chancellor. Um, I had served there for just two years before Mr. President appointed me a Minister of Power for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Can you tell us about your career? your appointment as the mm -hmm. Minister of Power, sir, how did it all begin? Um, it's one of those things that you could just say um, are providential. For instance, I never imagined, having never been a politician and never played any prominent role in politics in Nigeria or anywhere for that matter, I wasn't even interested in student union government work while I was in university in the United States of America. So I've been in the ivory tower for most of my life. And uh, to end up um, being appointed by President Goodluck Billy Jonathan to be Minister of Power was quite intriguing for me. Um, it was such a huge challenge coming out from the quote unquote safe ivory tower you know, environment to a political terrain that is ever so murky and uh, that is very unpredictable. Uh, but along the way, I have gathered a lot of experience because you cannot run one of the largest universities in Nigeria, the University of Nigeria and Soka, without garnering a lot of experience. So that really helped to predispose me to being a manager of human beings, manager of systems, an astute administrator, and so on. And that was actually what led to my being appointed pioneer vice chancellor of Federal University, Oyekite. So uh, that's where I was before I was an appointed Minister of Power. So career-wise, I'm an engineer by training. I've been an engineering professor for so many years now. And uh, I really enjoy teaching in the classrooms, doing research and things like that. Uh, but right now, I'm right at the center of politics and politicking, uh, serving my whole country as a Minister of Power. The federal government promised that power supply will be stable in the country towards the end of this year. What plans do you have to achieve this? We really are working very hard to make sure that that promise is delivered to the people of Nigeria. We, of course, do have a lot of um, hindrances on the way, and a good deal of this is man-made. And uh, part of this is because um, some of the power plants that we have built in this country, there was no concomitant arrangement at the time to make sure that there was gas supply for these um, thermal plants all over the country. So we are trying to address that. President Jonathan has done a lot in energizing the Ministry of Power and the entire power sector by ensuring that the necessary um, resources needed to make sure that his promises are met, especially promises delivered through the roadmap for power sector reform, that they are delivered to the people. We are working very hard to make sure that that happens. The drop in power has been blamed on gas pipeline vandalism. How true is this, sir? Gas pipeline vandalism is the major cause of the current drop in power. The reasons are so obvious. You know, a good deal of the gas we use for power plants are associated gas. So this associated gas comes in the same delivery mechanisms that we have the oil coming in too. So whenever the vandals break through the oil pipelines, uh, somehow you have a build up of the condensates and then the condensates that are need must be evacuated so that gas can flow. If they are not evacuated and they reach up to a limit, you have to shut the gas pipeline. So it is important that we uh, always remember that. Then on the other side, there's uh, vandals who just 
want to do havoc. And those of them who incidentally just don't like the country or they don't like the government or they're just saboteurs, you know, they just try to destroy the infrastructure, not only uh, oil and gas pipelines, but also transmission infrastructure and other assets of government. So these are the reasons, mostly vandalism. Uh, because when they break through the, for the instance, just about a few weeks ago, we lost almost 1,000 megawatts, and that's all because of vandalism of the gas pipelines. Sir, what's your take on the privatization of power holding company in Nigeria? I think the power holding company of Nigeria privatization is the best thing that has happened to the country, Nigeria, and to the power sector specifically. You know, with the level of resources needed in order to make sure that Nigerians have good quantities of electricity in very good quality, there is no way any government can make that possible. Already in Nigeria, we have just barely 40% of our people that are connected to the national grid. How do you give power to the people when the government has competing sectors, the health sector, education sector, social welfare sector, works, transport, all kinds of sectors. The government has only a finite base for resources to take care of these sectors. So one way to liberalize uh, this is to incentivize the private entrepreneurs who are interested in producing power, transmitting power, distributing power, so that because of the profit motive they will be made to produce much larger quantities of energy for the country. That's why privatization, I think, is the best thing that has happened to this country with regard to electricity supply. Please tell us about the hydropower dams. How does it work? The hydropower dams have come in to help Nigeria so wonderfully. Take Kainji, for instance, and then Shiroro and Jeba. These are large hydropower dams. Without these three, there were very challenging periods in Nigeria's electricity history that would, make, would have plunged the whole country into darkness without the hydropower um, stations. A drop in water levels. There is a lot of challenge going on because there has to be excellent water management technology capability of the crew that are running the hydropower plants to ensure that they compensate for this drop and it drops up to a level that power begins to go down and they have to be shut down of course if it goes to critical levels so i would say that those have been very useful and very thankfully president good luck jonathan flagged off what would be the largest of the ones already created um, on the 13th of um, May, no, 28th of May 2013. He flagged that off at Zungeru, and that's the Zungeru hydropower plant. And that's going to give 700 megawatts of power to the grid. In addition to that, very soon, in a couple of weeks, very hopefully, Mr. President will also flag off Mambila hydropower project that will deliver 3,050 megawatts, which is essentially almost three quarters, two thirds to three quarters of the whole power delivery in Nigeria. So you can then imagine how much more power Nigeria will have when these hydropower plants are commissioned. Ask the Minister of Power. What has been your challenges so far? Challenges are uh, mostly because I inherited and the, pres uh, the go government of President Goodluck Jonathan inherited an aging and dilapidated power infrastructure. You don't transform these things overnight. It takes time. You know, like um, no matter what you do, a pregnancy will take nine months. And you can't just say, well, one month is enough or two months. It goes through the cycle. Same goes for power. You have to plan what you want to deliver. You have to design what you want to deliver. You have to procure what you have to deliver. You have to now import, or most of them are imported, of course. You have to procure them and then give contracts for those who will supply. Some of these things will take three years to manufacture. 
At the earliest, some of them will take about 18 months, one and a half years to manufacture. So beginning from that gestation period, from the planning to delivery, may take anywhere from 24 months to 48 months. That's why everybody's looking for uh, immediate results. It takes time. We keep pleading with Nigerians to be patient with us. Already they are improvement in power supplies all over the country. But it comes in trickles because more power we have, more communities that we're not even getting power we can, we'll start getting. So those who are already getting might not feel the impact substantially. For instance, you go to Kaduna now. Kaduna has 22 to 23 hours of power supply on a daily basis. There are other cities that are close to that. Parts of Abuja, you have 18 to 22 hours. Other parts, you have about 12 to 15 hours and so on. So it's gradually that these things are happening. So hopefully, uh, we'll get there, and the Nigerians will have much more power than they had ever seen before. Amen. You know, when the National Integrated Power Projects were conceived, wonderful thoughts, wonderful idea, liberating thoughts and ideas and mechanisms put in place to solve Nigeria's power problem, or to begin really to address Nigeria's power problem, unfortunately, there was no concomitant plans for supply of gas. So, it's like you build houses in the forest, there are no roads to get there. And whenever you even get there or waddle through the mud puddles and things like that, there was no infrastructure on the ground. So that was the experience uh, that President Jonathan inherited. So we had to synergize. That's between myself, on, uh, Minister of Power, and um, Honorable, my sister, the Honorable Minister of Petroleum Resources. We synergized and started at talking about and planning how to produce gas and make sure that all the NIPP projects get enough gas. At the time, we saw that it was much more than just telling the gas companies, give us more gas. You had to insist. We do. We raise the price of gas from a very paltry sum. In fact, there was a time recently it was only 50 cents per scoff, you know and they are measured in millions of scoff and something like that. And then we raised it. It came up to $1, $1.50 and so on. But now we put it at $2.50 and then 80 cents for transportation. No gas suppliers have ever had it this good for supplying gas to power stations. That's number one. And then number two, we also had to now invite the central bank governor and the chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission so that there will be a quadrilateral, quadrilateral agreement and synergy to make sure that this is driven by settling the legacy debts that the power companies owe the gas suppliers and the distribution companies owed the power companies. So you have a chain of debts all through. Gas companies were not paid by power companies. Power companies were not paid by distribution and transmission company. And then the customers, of course, are not even paying for the power they are getting. So we wanted to clear the backlog of debt owed to the gas companies to be an added impetus or incentive for them to produce more gas and also to clear that one of the generation companies. And that's exactly why four of us made we agreed, we signed the agreement, we got all the companies involved to sign off on that, and it is on ground right now. You know, um, many people look at life and they complain a lot. I think it's important to look at life from a very positive perspective. Instead of saying that the cup is half empty, say it is half full. Instead of complaining about the things you don't have, thank God for the things you do have. Instead of going out of your way to spend money, to buy things to, you don't need, to impress people you don't like, 
Conserve and get those things that are needful and necessary for yourself. And instead of idling away time, especially for young people, I tell young people, hard work never kills. If you worked hard enough, maximize the potentials God has implanted in you, you are most likely to become somebody in the future. But if you sat down waiting for crumbs to fall from all kinds of places, you are complaining, you don't have a good environment, you don't have rich parents, you don't have mentors, instead of really applying yourself, marketing yourself, going out and becoming, and then you're indolent, you know, complacent, you don't care, you're not going to go anywhere. But if you rise up, know that you have talents, find out what those talents are, try them out. Be persuasive. Know that you are somebody. God doesn't make junks. And if you, you know, I would tell young people, look, God has implanted great gifts in every one of you. Think about what it might be for you. Try it out. Take the bull by the horn. Break out and become. And God will help you to attain whatever heights you've marked out for yourself. Thank you so much for showing up on this special edition of Bold Faces. Thank you so much. Sir. My pleasure, my pleasure. I'm Chinedu Ositadem Manebo, Honorable Minister of Power, Federal Republic of Nigeria. You are watching Bold Faces with Tricia. Wow, that was quite an incisive interview with the Honorable Minister of Power. I don't know about you, I am quite convinced personally that with our power minister, Professor Chinedu Nebo, we will get to the promised land. As I speak with faith, let there be light, and there was light in the beginning of creation. <laughs> now, just a bit of a laugh to keep that smile on your face until I see you next time. My humble self, Trisha Esibe Kerry. <laughs>